Monica Brown Sanders, and I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, in Flatbush to be specific. And I was raised um, in a family with six children, um, mother and father. Uh, grew up in Brooklyn and attended um, small girls Catholic high school in Park Slope, Brooklyn, and was taught by nuns for four or five years, uh, four years in high school, and then um, had a wonderful opportunity to uh, uh, play basketball at Northwestern University as a scholarship athlete. So I tracked out to the Midwest and spent four years studying at Northwestern while playing basketball. I studied um, communications, was my major, and was in the communications field and had wonderful opportunities each summer to do internships. Uh, interned at a number of, of um, television stations in and around Chicago and also had a very successful career playing basketball at Northwestern, um, which culminated with um, a wonderful senior year where I led the nation in scoring and made the U.S. national team, played overseas um, on the U.S. national select team, went all over the world and played basketball the, the summer of uh, 1985, and then decided to go and get my master's degree in marketing communications and finished that degree and then started my career in work. Yeah, I, you know, being raised in a family of six was, was a challenge for both parents. My mother was born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio, and my father emigrated to the United States from Guyana, South America, when he was 16 years old. And he came here with very little and put himself through the remainder of high school and then through college by working odd jobs. Um, met my mother in New York City and married and held down three at times four jobs to put us through school. Most of us ended up in private schools because of his ability to you know, work three and four jobs at a time. Um, my sister, uh, Ruth Brown, is a Harvard PhD um, undergrad, Princeton. My brother, um, undergrad, Yale University. My sister and I both, my other sister and I both went to Northwestern. Um, my youngest sister graduated from Smith College, so we all were, you know, the emphasis in the family all through our upbringing was about education, education, education. I happened to be the only athlete in the family, and it was very, very um, aggressively stressed that the amount of time you spend in the gym playing, you spend twice the time in the books, and that emphasis kind of followed through, I would say, throughout my entire career at Northwestern and really kind of prevails today in my, in my professional life in terms of um, preparation and study and making sure that you're, you're prepared for everything that you, need to, that you need to do. Learning starts for us in our family, learning started with all of the chores that we are assigned to do. You know, in a family of six children, everybody, we were all assigned to do the different tasks during the day. And so our days began pretty early. I had, you know, to go out and obviously walk the dogs, clean after the dogs, um, and then spend a good amount of time after school in the books, and then doing more chores. Um, but I would say there was a, there was a very strong, strong emphasis on reading, and writing techniques. Um, our summers were filled with um, a number of, of educational programs that were focused on. Um, becoming proficient writers. Um, literacy obviously was ex you know, extremely important. So we weren't expected to just simply read at level. We were expected to read well beyond level. Um, I would say that there was also you know, a very strong emphasis in the home on being prepared to take some of those standardized tests, which I think some, you know, in many instances hold, a, you know, hold many of our, our kids back. Um, there's a skill in taking those tests. and. Um, typically, only the privileged are able to, to be involved in, in, in many of those uh, classes that prepare you for the SATs and the achievement tests. And I think um, the emphasis in our household was, you know, even if you bought the books from the library or bought the books from stores, there was a very strong emphasis on preparing to take those tests and learning to the techniques in taking those tests, and that was helpful in terms of our ability to, to get into some of the top schools in the country. And that was all emphasized through our parenting. Um, 
I work with young people all the time and have learned specifically from my parents. Um, the philosophy is lift, lift as you rise. And I've really tried to instill upon anybody I bring into the organization uh, throughout all of the work that I do that it's important to bring young people up as you rise through an organization. I think so much of your success is about the opportunities that you're given. And for many young people, I, I'm a mentor. I work with young people on a regular basis so that they understand that there's, there's a light at that end, the end of that tunnel and it's not a train. Um, and I always try to, to instill upon them that no matter how young you are, you can be a leader in your community. Um, we talk a lot, um, I talk a lot to young people about racism and about the challenges of African Americans, men, women, Latino men, women in, you know, in and around the New York City area and the challenges that they're faced with. Um, many of them feel very dis, you know, disenfranchised. They don't feel that the structure is built for them, is meaningful for them, and because of that, many of them choose not to be part of the process. But I always try to communicate that I think the United States, when you look at opportunity for minorities across the world, I really think that the United States has more opportunity for African Americans and Latinos, minorities in, in, across the board than any other country in the world. And I, I say that because this, it's really, it, it's founded on hard work and perseverance. And I constantly go back to the importance of not giving up and telling young people that if you have a dream, don't give up your dream. Because when you give up your dream, you die. And that's one of the things that's so important is that your, your spirit dies within you when, you when you give up that dream. And when you have a dream, you need to act on it. So you need to think about, if I have a dream of working in the NBA or working in the sports industry or working in radio, television, seek out people who are in that field and volunteer and take the time to get to understand the, the, the foundations of, of people in that industry. Um, read. It's so important that we read because read is, reading is knowledge and knowledge is power. And that's one of the things that we need to do more of in our communities and encourage young people to read. So that's, that's been a, a prominent message whenever I talk to young people. My personal accomplishments. I talked a little bit about what I, my accomplishments in terms of my athletic career, which I also think has played such an important role in my success. Uh, the ability, the importance of understanding your role on a team and playing and realizing the importance of everybody's role on the team and, and the fact that I've been able to take those qualities and those important principles and apply them in the workplace. Um, those, my accomplishments on, obviously on, on the court are, you know, at the highest, I, I was a world-class athlete. As I said, I played on the U.S. national team, traveled the world, played semi-pro ball, was invited to the 2000, uh, the 2000 WNBA um, draft, and that was huge accomplishments. But what I was able to do was I was able to use my accomplishments in sport to get an education to be a scholarship athlete and really take advantage of that. There are too many athletes out there that don't get a degree after their four years of play and they've walked away from an incredible opportunity. So um, I was able to use that, in, in, that opportunity and bridge that to my career. There are, there are some fundamental uh, principles that can be applied across all business um, that you learn in team sports. Um, I have, you know, I feel very accomplished in terms of my ability to, to walk into a sales force and I spent 11 years at IBM, five of which were in sales. Um, the other, you know, six were in corporate marketing. Um, but I was able to apply what I learned in the field in my marketing capacity at the headquarters for IBM. And that experience um, provided me with an opportunity to travel the world and work on the Olympic project. Um, IBM provided the enabling technology for the Olympic Games. So wherever the Olympic Games were, I was, and I managed a, a support team and a marketing team that really helped communicate the story around why the company provided the enabling technology to the team and how that translates to the marketplace. Um, and then my next, you know, I think major accomplishment was securing a job here at the New York Knicks. Um, that was, 
you know, for me, paramount because I always, throughout my career, wanted to find my way back to a sports marketing capacity that was focused on basketball. And that was, so getting a job at the New York Knicks as the Vice President of Marketing was huge. A year and a half later, I was promoted to Senior Vice President, which allows me to, um, to manage the business of the team and all of the support structure that's involved with driving revenue for the organization. Other major accomplishment and probably the, the most important one to me is my children. I have three children, age 15, um, 12 and 8, two boys and a girl, and that's, you know, it, it's an accomplishment in itself that I can manage my three children and come to work and, and work in an executive capacity every day. And the whole balance of work life, work and family is huge. My husband is, is very helpful and, you know, has been instrumental in, in me being able to do this and provides a good, a good amount of support so we can do this together. Um, but that to me is, is my greatest accomplishment.